Hi, this is Fernando González Gómez, co-director of the film The Passenger with my friend Raúl Cerezo, and you are listening to The Great Yard Show. Welcome to another edition of the Graveyard Show podcast. I am your caretaker, and the graveyard is open. Welcome back, everyone. It's good to have you back. As you heard at the top of the show, director Fernando Gonzalez Gomez will be here. He uh, He's the co-director of the new film called The Passenger. He and his directing partner, Raul Cerezo, uh, made the film, and it is uh, due out in theaters June 3rd, and it'll be available on demand and DVD June 20. Eighth, Fernando uh, will uh, discuss uh, the film. We'll talk about uh, what it was like shooting during the pandemic and uh, also uh, an incredibly interesting story about how this film came to be. All that in just a moment. But first, if you'd like to reach out to the program, you can do so. The email address is gyspodcast at gmail.com. That's caretakersawesome at gmail.com. You can send me your thoughts, comments, and if you're part of the horror community and you have something to promote, please do not hesitate to reach out. There are several of you who have been taking advantage of that opportunity, and uh, uh, as they can tell you, uh, I am very quick, well, kind of quick. <laughs> I don't want to sound like I'm immediate, but uh, yes, I do, uh, I do respond, and um, definitely would love to give promotion for any of you that are looking for it in the horror community that's uh, as an interview or if you have something to promote that you would like to pass along i'd be happy to mention it on the podcast uh before i get to fernando uh let's talk a little news resurrection teaser trailer is available online i did mention this on my last uh, podcast uh, the film stars Rebecca Hall and Tim Roth, and it is the sophomore film for Andrew Siemens, who also wrote the film. Uh, you can hear all the rave reviews it's been getting uh, by going one podcast back, uh, where I uh, read through them, and uh, the film is getting very, very good reviews. So check it out. It is Resurrection. The teaser trailer is available now online. Saban Films presents American Carnage, which is going to be in theaters on demand and digital July 15th. The film is directed by Diego uh, Halavis and written by the Halavis brothers. hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. The synopsis is as follows. After a governor issues an executive order to arrest the children of undocumented immigrants, the newly detained youth are offered an opportunity to have their charges dropped by volunteering to provide care for the elderly. Once inside the elder care facility, the volunteers discover the governor and the facility supervisor have cooked up a horrifyingly depraved conspiracy that endangers the young and the old in this twisted thriller comedy. Chucky is coming to Shout Factory. That's right. Child's Play 1, 2, and 3 will have all new 4K ultra high def debuts here in North America. You can purchase the three films as either standalones or you can get exclusive bundles, which include posters, postcards, slipcover variants, and a killer Nika figure. To learn more about it, you can go to the Shout Factory website, uh, where they are also accepting pre-orders as well. Off-season, the film written and directed by Mickey Keating will be heading to home video on June 14th. Uh, the film will be available on Blu-ray and DVD, and the film stars Jocelyn Donahue, Joe Swanberg, and Richard Brake, to name a few. Uh, now, Mickey joined me on this podcast back on Tombstone 40, where we talked about the film in greater depth. So I invite you to check that out when you have time. We Need to Do Something is going to be available on DVD and Blu-ray June 16th. The film is directed by Sean King O'Grady, written by Max Booth II, and stars Sierra McCormick, Vanessa Shaw, Pat Healy, and John James Cronin. Seeking shelter from a storm, a family finds themselves trapped for days with no sign of rescue and untold evils lurking just beyond the walls in this wildly fun House of Horrors thrill ride. 
Fright Rags has new merchandise available. The Monsters Collection has arrived, and you can also purchase the Summer of Elvira officially licensed t-shirts as well. And there's a Honey, the original male girl shirt available as well. Check it all out at FrightRags.com. And to wrap it up, a reminder to check out Weary Pines' website to purchase their complete soundtracks to the 1980s documentaries In Search of Tomorrow and In Search of Darkness 1 and 2. You can find all of their work at wearypines.com. That is weary, W-E-A-R-Y, P-I-N-E-S, wearypines.com. And uh, you can also stream them on your favorite music streaming sites as well. I know the fellows would appreciate that because the more you do that, the more they get into the algorithm and the more exposure they will get to new listeners. All right, that's going to wrap it up for news and notes. As you hear in the background, a new grave is being added, which means my guest is here and it's time for me to get to work. Joining me now is Fernando Gonzalez Gomez, the co-director of the new film, The Passenger, which had its world premiere at the 2021 Stiges Film Festival and was nominated for the Audience Award. The Passenger will be in theaters on June 3rd and on demand and DVD June 28th. And it's a pleasure welcoming Fernando to the graveyard. Fernando, welcome to the show. Hello, thank you very much for having me. It's great to have you here. So um, why don't we just get into the basic question of, uh, why don't you tell everybody out there what your film, The Passenger, is about? It's about a sharing van that is uh, traveling to a small village at the north of Spain, crossing some forest, and they, at, in the middle of the night, they hit someone that is walking in the middle of, of, of the road, and they decided to 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 well to rescue her and and move to the to the nearest uh, hospital, but it was a bad a bad a very very bad decision because there is something inside her, and I'm not going to tell you more. I think that's a good idea. Let's we'll let we'll let the audience see it for themselves. Now, um, my understanding is that the story idea uh, came from your uh, directing partner uh, Raúl Cerezo. Um, how did how did he come up with the idea? The idea came, it's, it's really, really good history because came, you know, in Spain there is a very popular app in the mobile phones that it's uh, BlaBlaCar. And BlaBlaCar is an app uh, and that, uh, that you have a profile and you can share a trip. Okay, you said, okay, I'm going from Madrid to Barcelona and I'm going to start the trip at 9 a.m. on Monday. Okay, and then you share the trip and then the people can join you and pay some money in order to pay the gas or whatever, okay? Uh, what happened, uh, and it happened in the, in the movie that uh, Blasco says that uh, it, it, he's noted in the app that he uh, speak a lot because blah, blah, cla- car came from blah, 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 or blah, blah, blah. I mean, you define you as a driver if you are a, a driver that speak a lot or not. No? Then Raul was one of those drivers uh, heading to Sitges Film Festival in 2018, I think, or, or 15, like uh, seven years ago. And uh, they was driving with an uh, old woman inside the, the car, and Elion Ramallo, that is also the uh, co-producer of the of the film. They was driving, and in a moment of the trip, uh, entered into a car a new passenger that was a black guy. And in that moment, this uh, old woman starting to uh, transformation to a uh, racist uh, monster uh, saying bad things to the guy and then Raul says okay we can catch this and then transform in a genre movie and have something going bad when something came inside the, the van and it came from from that trip wow wow what an interesting story that is um how did you get involved with the project well, the project came to me because uh, I uh, shooted my first feature film uh, called uh, Standard, 
in 2019 and uh, Raul uh, watch it it's a very different movie because it's like a black comedy it's like if the Cohen brothers was born in a small village in the middle of Spain or something like this <laughs> and, uh, and Raul uh, watched the movie and said oh Fernando you, you made this movie with the uh, high level of, of freedom, no? like total freedom. I said, yes, yes. I don't know if it's good or not, but I made with uh, full freedom. And then he tell me, okay, I want to show you this, this movie because no one is interested in, in The Passenger. You know what happened? Uh, all the things that now the audience love is the things that all the producers say that it cannot be in a movie. Okay, then uh, finally uh, we present the movie to, to our producer, the producer of, of La Dalia Films uh, from, from Standard. They say yes, green light, and then Raul and I jump it into a pool with no water. <laughs> that's always the kind. <laughs> those it. are the, those are the best pools to jump into. <laughs> yeah, that could be, could be. No. <laughs> and then, uh, well, we we made it to together because probably we have the same way to see the how a production on how to tell the story. No, we 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 very we like to plan a lot the shots and at home and make a a, a big work of design where the camera is going to be and uh, we, we we see the, the 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 movie in the same way and we try to have one vision you no know, the vision of two persons changing sequences one each other uh, i mean more than uh, one vision together uh, and this is what we try to do um how long of prep did you and Raul do uh, putting storyboards together or putting a shot list together. How long did that take, roughly? Uh, we had the green light like in April of uh, 2020, uh, 2020, and we started shooting in August. Then probably we work like two months or three months together. And how, I mean, you're, you, I hear April of 2020 and I start to shudder um because of the pandemic and uh, yeah. i mean so obviously how did the pandemic affect you shooting uh this film uh well the protocols you know all this all, all this shit but uh, it was nice because we was shooting in the middle we, we spent like uh, three weeks in the middle of the forest uh, we we been there in a in a camping all together uh, like in a um, bubble. Okay, mm -hmm. no one came to visit us. No one was there. Only the the team. Then we had no problems uh, in COVID. Uh, we was like uh, in the middle of nowhere shooting, shooting. And uh, when we moved to the plateau, it was like the same. We only was only the same people in the plateau uh, to the hotel to the plateau. I mean not the it effect because was no family living during the shutting days no we spent like a one month and a half only with the people of the of the team no no visits uh, no one wow. everything in a in a in a bubble that's that's quite a commitment i'm sure everybody once the film was done i'm sure all of you were happy to get out and seeing your family and friends again it was a 29 day shoot is my understanding um, how much of it was on location and how much of it was on stage? Was uh, like uh, three weeks and three weeks uh, on the stage was uh, three weeks uh, on the the Nessa fake we can talk about mm -hmm. because it was really nice. And then three weeks in the middle of the forest with the real Nessa. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious with the van, because obviously there is so much going on in this van, in this film, uh, again, without giving yeah. anything away. I mean, it's probably 80% of the movie probably takes place in the van, uh, maybe more. Probably, but, probably, probably. Um, if you if you, if you you take count uh, the, the minutes, probably 80%, yes, probably. So I was assuming that you were shooting that on an LED uh, stage, uh, or, or am no. I incorrect? Green, green, green. Uh, oh, green screen. Green screen, green screen. Wow. Uh, we made a, we, yes, yes. Uh, it was a crazy good work from user T38. That was the company that was involved with what they made all the effects of color out of space. 
they are based on Madrid. They are really, really good. And the work with the green screen that they made is crazy good. There is uh, 542 shots with uh, VFX uh, applied on it. Wow. But uh, most of those are invisible, like reflections, like the windows, like the, I mean, all the, all the escape uh, passing through the windows because everything was uh, green um, in a combination with the real ones. That is amazing. That, that's some of the best green screen work I've seen in a movie, period. I could have sworn that that was shot on an LED stage. So uh, th- I that's will, fantastic. I will pass all, 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 these, all your opinion directly to User T- T- yeah. uh, they, from, from you. It, it's, it's fantastic. I mean, it was really, because, I mean, there's some really, I mean, there's some really bad green screen out there where you, it takes you right yeah, out of it. Yeah. And I'm watching even, this. And I'm, even, in a big, even in a big production, they yeah. have a lot of amounts of money than us. <laughs> it, 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 I mean, it was fantastic. It never took me out of the movie ever. It was one of those things where I was watching it and I was obviously because I knew I was having you on. I wanted to make note of that. But it, I mean, it, it never takes you out at all. I, wow, that is fantastic. Um, yes, it's a, it's a very good combination in between the work of user T38 and Nacho Aguilar, the DOP. That is his first feature film as DOP. And, and I think that the work is uh, very, very good. Yeah, I was going to ask you, how did you find Igna- it's Ignacio, correct? Ignacio? Ignacio, yes. yes. Ignacio, yes. H- Ignacio. How did you find him? Well, Ignacio is a very, very, very friend from a very long time of Raul. They made together a lot of short films in the past. Uh, and and also his uh, his um, teacher of, of, of DOP, some DOPs, uh, uh, director of photography schools in Madrid. And he have a, a, well, a highly knowledge about, about photography. He's a really, really a big freak of photography. And, and well, it's, it was really nice to work with with Nacho because because oh, he he was with his firm feature film and he do the work really well, really well, well really yeah. good choices. I, I I mean, all of you did such a tremendous job in front and behind the camera with this movie. Um, I wanted to get back to the van and talk about the van because um, unlike like some movies that take place where you where you trap your characters either in a house or an apartment complex or a movie theater or a, a mall, um, your film essentially is in this you know van. Um, how <laughs> how I mean talk about working in a tight space. Uh, was it difficult to make the act uh, the action interesting? Uh, or different when you when you were filming this, or did you just you already knew how you were going to shoot each of these sequences? It's a combination of these two. No, one is you see, it's going to be difficult to not burn bore the, the the audience because you are inside the one place, and then we need to be fresh and and do things with the camera. But even we was focused a lot with the. Uh, cinematographic language, no, in order that we choose where to put the camera, that is because we are telling something to the audience. I mean, if we are putting the half of the of the of the uh, face of one of the characters, and then the half of the face of the other of the characters, is because we are connecting the characters. But also, I mean, it's like a combination of uh, be fresh. And uh, not bored the, the 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 audience, but also a combination of have uh, something to say with the camera. You definitely did. I mean, I could definitely see that, especially the like you just mentioned the the, the half face shot of uh, of Blasco, and then the other half of Marta, and how he has yes. you know the eye, his left eye is that's and it, then, and that's then it on her, yeah, and then her she has the burns on her right. Uh, side of her face so you 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 catch this connection very early on that these two are going to have um i mean speak about the acting i mean you had such great actors uh in this film uh ramiro playing uh blasco you have uh cecilia playing mariella and paula playing marta and christina playing lydia and you have these four characters who are the who are the main uh 
uh, the, the center of this. Um, there's, uh, there's a lot of intense acting, but there's also some comedic moments, some lighter moments. Um, so talk about directing them and how, how they all came about it, making this. Was, uh, this is a good point. Uh, in the moment we started work uh, in the casting process, uh, we said that was really, really important uh, what, what, are, what, what the choices are going to be. Uh, because uh, uh, how they interact or where, where, where you are going to position the, the, the audience at the starting point. Because in the starting point, you are seeing like a traditional comedy. I mean, if, if you erase the, se the, the starting sequence in the forest, you are in a comedy. There's people sharing a band, uh, going to, to some places and they are doing some jokes, no? Then then was, was uh, um, uh, like a big problem to set, to decide, uh, Raul and I, where we are going to position these characters. But when we are starting the, the first readings with the, with the cast, everything is starting to, to flow, like automatically, because the text from, from Luis was really, really good. Uh, and, and then everything is starting to, to, to match. But I want to tell you something. Marta, uh, Paula Gallego, uh, came to the project one week and a half before we start shooting wow. because we had a problem with the with the with the other uh, cast with the other girl and then um, two weeks uh, from the starting point we have no uh, actress for the character of, Ma of marta and and paula start one week and a half before the shooting that was crazy the chemistry that she get with with Blasco in in so many in, in, in only one week and a half of, of working no? together yeah I mean there's really good chemistry between them uh, and you would never have known that she came on last minute like that because um, they work so well together uh, and you don't think early on that there's going to be any kind of connection between the two characters and obviously as the story goes on <laughs> we start seeing this connection that starts happening um, your film in a way reminded me of of other horror movies that I don't want to say are comedies. I mean, some of them were horror comedies, but the way you handled some of the horror elements in this movie, instead of going straight traditional horror, um, you kind of changed it up a little bit and made it, I guess you could say, for maybe non-horror fans, easier for them to sit through because it's not as 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 jarring like a film like maybe like Shaun of the dead or maybe even like moments of evil dead 2 where you kind of put yeah. a little bit of satire on it without it being silly and i was wondering if you um consciously wanted to make sure that it was it was more comedic than silly and if you were if there are ever times where you thought mm, we don't want to push the envelope because you it is a yeah. horror movie yeah, you you know what happened? Uh, the genre uh, lovers uh, I detect a lot, and a lot in the states, but uh, also in Spain, that they love to catch the tributes. Mm -hmm. You know, like the Easter eggs. Yep. Like uh, ah yes, here is uh, Brian De Palma. Here is Evil Dead. Here is uh, Shaun of the Dead. Here, you know, but it's not like that. I mean, I, I mean, I, I think that we are influenced by everything that we watch then when you are starting to apply uh the 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 where you are going to to put the the, the camera how you are going to move the camera in your mind uh, you have all these shots that you already show in different movies no then then uh, no no not you are not making a tribute you are you are like uh, trying to have your own, or, or, or Raul and, uh, and I, we are trying to have our own voice, mm -hmm. uh, but for sure being influenced by all these general movies and all these uh, artists and all, 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 all these genius no? uh, that we already show in our lives. I love the refreshing use you made of the music in the film because you have some traditional horror, mu horror music uh, or harsh score, um, but you you change it up and you use different types, a different style of music. Would you mind just uh, discussing that a little bit? What, why you decided to do what you did? Yeah, uh, as you said, there is a mix. We have like this uh, traditional horror carpenter music, like like that. Not to say something more eighties, ninety 
this kind of traditional or, or electronic music with some orchestra, but more more electronic. And uh, we have this, uh, as I tell you, this paso dobles. The paso dobles is a traditional uh, uh, music from the bullfighting culture. And it's a traditional music that you probably are going to hear in every a small orchestra in every small village around Spain when where the parties of the village are going to take place. No, mm -hmm. uh, then we 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 use it because in the script was the music that defined Blasco. Blasco was defined by this music and mm -hmm. was noted on the script to use this this kind of orchestra music. Uh, but when we was in the editing uh, proceed with Sergio Rojas, Raul and I, uh, we, 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 we show that this kind of music works uh, crazy good in the thriller moments, in the terror moments. And what's really, really good how this like contrapoint, like something different hitting the action and you're sitting more fast uh, like fast music, yeah. like orchestra music, but you are seeing something horrible. Then we, we like a lot how this match with the black comedy that you watch at the at the first uh, third of the movie, you know? Yeah. And this is uh, why we decided to to use during the, the, the film. Yeah, it was great, especially for the opening sequence. Like you said, you, you, you if you take out the first couple minutes of the movie, you start... Uh, with Blasco and the van, and you hear the Paso Dobles playing, <laughs> it's like, wow, okay, yeah. you, you get a diff a very different feel for how this film is going to be, and it gives you a, it gives you this foundation of what to expect as we watch yeah. and go on this journey. It, it's so it's so great and it's so refreshing. I, I'm so glad that you did that. Um, the special effects in the film were really amazing. Um, I was wondering. Uh, if you wanted to do more practical special effects for this as opposed to trying to do uh, more visual, you know, uh, computer effects? Uh, well, uh, Raul, in the first point, is a ultra freaky lover of uh, the thing from Carpenter <laughs> and, 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 and a lot of these, uh, his, his movies. Uh, and, and then for the first point, he he and I, while well, we was talking about this, to try to use as more practical as we can, because you know there is a limit in the practical that you cannot go for it. Uh, and 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 what's the idea from the first? Because we really see always the VFX. You know, uh, uh, the, the the VFX can be really good, uh, uh, but even when are good you are you are seeing that something is not real no it's, you, you cannot touch it yeah and and we, we we really love to 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 work with with practical uh, was a really good idea because everyone that watched the movie loved the practical but was not good idea for the camera team because i don't going to tell you how was the smell of these things? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that was fun. <laughs> there was a lot of goop, and I'm looking at that going, oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I remember touch it and I smell it and it was uh, crazy. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Um, if, uh, if anybody wants to follow you on social media, or do you have a social media presence or no? Yes, 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 yes. They can follow me, Fer Gonzalez Cat, C U T. Uh, all my social media is the same name. And my friend Raul Cerezo is Cerezadas. Then they can, they can follow us. And if they follow me, for sure, they will find Raul in social media. Excellent. Well, The Passenger is going to be in theaters June 3rd. And it's going to be on demand and DVD June 28th. Uh, Fernando, thank you so much for joining me here inside the Graveyard Show. It was really, this was a lot of fun. I wish you all the best with this film. It's a great movie. And uh, would love to have you back on the program again down the road as well. Well, we just announced it in a Screen Daily yesterday our second movie together. That it's uh, called The Elderly. And it's now in, presented in the Marché du Film in Cannes by the hand of Filmax, then who knows uh, if, if we are going to have a uh, United States uh, distribution, but uh, hopefully next year you will have another Cerezos 
movie because we said that we are de cerezos, that is from Fernando and Cerezo mixing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Your next movie comes out. We'll have you back on the podcast. How's that sound? Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> And as I put this interview to rest, I want to again thank Fernando for joining me here on the program. The Passenger, June 3rd, in theaters, June 28th, on demand and DVD. This is one of the best looking films I have seen in a long time, by the way. Uh, and when you see it, I think you'll agree. The, the film just looks fantastic. And I wasn't kidding about the special effects either. I really did think that this was uh, filmed in front of an LED screen. That's how good this green screen looks. Uh, as I begin to close down the graveyard, I wanted to uh, invite you to join me on my latest endeavor, known as Catacombs of Horror. It can be found on the Graveyard Show podcast YouTube channel in the playlist. However, it now has its own YouTube channel as well, and you can get there from the Graveyard Show podcast YouTube channel. There is uh, at the very top uh, banner uh, of the Graveyard Show podcast, you'll see uh, right on the photo, just to the right, it says Catacombs of Horror. Click that, it will take you to the new Catacombs of Horror YouTube channel. Uh, Catacombs of Horror is a video production that I produce exclusively for online content. Uh, currently, there are three videos which you can catch, one on 1980s horror, one on Count Yorga Vampire, and one on Halloween for the return of Michael Myers. And um, also, uh, my last podcast, I gave you a glimpse as to what my fourth catacombs of horror video will be and it's simply is the original suspiria overrated and if you want to learn more about why i asked that question go back one podcast to tombstone 47 and uh, i talk about why i've posed this question it's not a hot takes thing it's not a controversial thing it's not a thing to stir anybody up out there it is a legitimate question is suspiria overrated and if you uh, agree or disagree, you have any reasons, uh, you have anything you would like to contribute to the conversation, please email me. Um, and uh, I'd be happy to include your thoughts and comments uh, in the Catacombs of Horror video as well. Uh, I'm still in the early process of putting it together. So if you uh, think you're too late, and you, you please send it in anyway, uh, because I'm still in the early stages of putting this thing together. So there's plenty of time for those of you to weigh in on the topic. And of course, I always love hearing from you, um, especially in the Count Yorga videos. You guys are just killing it with the comments and the likes and everything. So greatly appreciate it. Speaking of which, um, if you wouldn't mind uh, rating the podcast on whatever podcasting site you listen to The Graveyard Show on, I would greatly appreciate that as well. I don't need a long uh, description on whether or not you like it. If you just want to rate it one star, five star, ten stars, whatever, I would greatly appreciate that. If you could, it just helps me out as well. I mean, you know, the podcast is free. <laughs> uh, and as I just mentioned, the Graveyard Show podcast is available everywhere podcasts exist. And of course, on YouTube, which I've mentioned as well, Graveyard Show podcast, YouTube channel, and Catacombs of Horror YouTube channel as well. Also, BC's Video Vault has been uploaded to the Graveyard Show podcast YouTube channel as well. Uh, for those of you that are not familiar, BC's Video Vault was a monthly segment that appeared on the Graveyard Show podcast in 2010. Uh, Brian Collins from Horror Movie A Day would do a monthly uh, contribution to the program, and he would review movies once a month for the show. And uh, I found the six of them, and I cut them up. And I'm putting them together and uploading them as their own separate playlist on the Graveyard Show podcast YouTube channel. So uh, the second one is either up or will be up very, very soon, depending on when you're listening to this. But it will be uh, the first one is definitely up. The second one should be up very, very soon. So you can catch those. It's really fun going back and listening to them. And Brian is so good with his uh, with his commentary. It's great. They're not very long. They're like six to eight minutes long, I think, for like three movies that he reviews each time. So join me inside BC's Video Vault as well. There you go. Got, got a lot of stuff for you, folks. I got the Graveyard Show podcast. I got uh, the YouTube channel with uh, all kinds of stuff on there. BC's Video Vault, Catacombs of Horror. And I have a whole lot of other stuff that I'm going to be uploading to the Graveyard Show podcast YouTube channel as well. Um, I'm finding all kinds of just archive stuff and just things that are just kind of floating around. I mean, it's just sitting on my hard drive. So I might as well just find a spot for it on the YouTube channel as well. All right. Enjoy uh, June. I will see you back here soon. 
Uh, and uh, if you know anyone who's a fan of horror, please invite them to enter the graveyard. New listeners and friends are always welcome. And as you exit the graveyard, I would like to remind you to please lock the gate behind you. We wouldn't want anyone to get out. Until next time. Thank you.